it's another world up there, and we go from this world to that world. It was interesting to me that you could go to the top of this 20, 30 foot hill, put this thing on your back, start walking, then running down the hill and suddenly you're floating above the hill. You're floating 10 feet above the hill. And suddenly 100 yards just went by. I don't know if everyone has flying dreams, but I always had them. And this was the realization of those feelings. Mankind has been laying on their backs in the mountains watching ox soar and, and wishing that we could do that. And really, it's only in the last hmm, maybe 35 years that we've realized that dream. Hang gliding satisfies the, the dreams I had as a kid when I dreamed of flying. You get people literally from all corners of the globe, from all walks of life. And they usually, the common thread that they have is this very simple joy for the experience, a very simple joy for, for life. When I realized that you can just clip onto something, run off a cliff, and fly, I just lost it. Pictures of him all over his shop flying hang gliders. And, you know, I was just a dumb 17-year-old kid, and I said, ah, I want to do that. driven to excel and I guess when you get proficient at something the next thing you want to do is compare yourself to the proficiency of others. They traditionally uh, measure how they're doing in gliding by some key elements. How long was my flight? How far did I go? Maybe how fast I went in the case of uh, you know racing. race is a timed event from launch two miles south to a turn point. The pilots will need to round that turn pylon and race back as fast as they can. It's that observation and performance. You're performing simultaneously with observing. It just trades off all day long and that's the, the sort of the beauty of this game is that it's so dynamic. It changes all the time. And
You know, my wife puts it probably best. She says, you know, dear, birds have brains this big and they fly really good. <laughs>